Well, good morning and a warm welcome to you this morning. It does feel very strange not having anyone in front of me, but it is good to be with you. And so grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Also with you. And so we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Therefore, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. And for this we are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, we ask that you forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. May he pardon and redeem you from all your sins. May he confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And may he keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And could I invite people, if there's room where they are, to stand for, for, for the Gloria, please. We continue with the words of the Connect. 
We pray, Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. We ask that you will transform the poverty of our nature through the riches of your grace and in the transformation of our lives, that you might make known you, 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 your glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, because he is alive, reigning with you in the bond of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for forever. Amen. And we come to our first reading. The first reading is the first from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose sight had begin, begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, for I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we the can... second reading. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 5. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. 
Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, a lamb, standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They were singing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So could I invite people to stand, please, for our gospel reading. <clears throat> we will hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And the reading comes from John chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 43. But the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, will you follow me? 
Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and of Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, who came from from Nazareth. But then Nathanael said to him, But can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And then Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, But teacher, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? For you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, I tell you, you will witness heaven being opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And this is the gospel of the Lord. A a praise to you, O Christ. Um, well, I pray that I may speak in God's name, and if you, 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 you do happen to be standing, do please sit down. What would happen, I wonder, if I rushed up to you one day and said, we have seen Jesus, we found him, we found the one who we heard about in the teachings of Moses? Well, I suspect the answer to that is that you might think that I needed a bit of a rest. But quite seriously, how we receive news like that depends, first of all, on whether we trust what we think of the person who is sharing that news. In our gospel story, all those people who are named would have known each other. They were sharing a piece of news that was very, very exciting. Interesting to note though, people's response, particularly that of Nathaniel. We might think from this distance that to hear that Jesus had been found would be a terribly exciting thing and we would rush off in worship and all. But for Nathaniel, he was deeply unimpressed. Oh, if that's the person you're talking about, if that's the person that I meant to rush and see, the one whose family came from from that place that I can never say, then frankly, I'm unimpressed because we know what happens over there and nothing good can come of it. It's interesting, isn't it, that all of our readings today are about the business of being called. Sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that the business of being called is deeply profound and deeply holy. That is true. Both of those things are true. Our mistake comes in the next bit of our thinking. Because it is deeply profound and deeply holy, it can't be for people like me. It's only for people like that over there. And that is our biggest mistake. 
Because in essence, the call, whatever it's to, whether it be to a particular sort of ministry or whether it be to something more general, is in essence the same thing. It is a call to come and see. If you have been with me for morning prayer over the last week, you will know we've been reading from the book of the prophet Amos. The prophet Amos was deeply unimpressed with a life of faith that didn't involve action. The prophet Amos said, don't give me your burnt offerings, don't give me your solemn prayers and your ceremonies, give me justice and righteousness. And that essentially is what the business of call is all about. It is a call to action to come and see because if we can come and see, we can share that news with other people. Throughout the Gospels, at those key moments, there has been somebody that has been a witness. Notice in the reading that Heather read to us from... Revelation. The person who had the vision is at pains to give us details so we will know that it is true. And so what does this business of coming and seeing mean for us in this season, particularly when it's very difficult to go anywhere? I bring us back to the importance of trusting the people who are telling you this stuff. If they are your friends, if you know who they are, you are likely to be able to make a judgment as to whether they are to be trusted or not. So in this season in particular, I think all of our readings taken together are a re-commitment, a reaffirmation to be attentive, not only to be attentive to God, but to be attentive to each other. Because if we are attentive to each other, we might notice things, gifts, abilities, strengths, all sorts of things that the person themselves will miss because they think that this business of call is for somebody else. It's for that person over there. And today I want to encourage you in the absolute certainty that we are all called. We are all called, and it doesn't mean we're all called to be the same. It means precisely the opposite. It means we are all called to be the children of God that we are made to be and to discover those gifts. In our Old Testament reading, which incidentally they always read to people whenever they go on a day that's to do with their calling, it took a person of great wisdom, it took Eli to work out that it was God who was calling Samuel. And so in this season in particular, whilst it's easy to think that the world has stopped, can I just say to you that is absolutely not true. And the reason that is absolutely not true is that the power of the Holy Spirit has not changed. So the, the power of the Holy Spirit is still at work. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to do things like this, that we couldn't imagine doing at the beginning of the year. So in ways that we can, 
Can I encourage us all to continue to come and see, to look at what God is doing, to look at what God is calling you to. And if you see somebody who clearly has a gift or a or a talent for something that they can't see, could I encourage you to encourage them in it? Because you could just be planting a seed that God will put to good purpose. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So could I invite people to stand as we declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. Because for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. For he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. For we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, and we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Um, would people please sit? <coughs> Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father God, we thank you for your great mercy and compassion. We know that we have little to give, but in the knowledge that you will respond with generosity and unconditional love, we offer our prayers to you this morning. Father, you have called your people to be salt and light on the earth. Give your church the courage and wisdom to call out where we see injustice and oppression and to shine the light of your love around us and in the world, working for the coming of your kingdom. 
We pray for the work of the Anglican Church in Australia and its Archbishop Geoffrey Smith as he seeks to lead the Church in discerning and pursuing the mission of God and in their provision of social welfare services to all in need. We bring to you the week of prayer for Christian unity and churches together in Kent and our own local group, Anglicans together in Southborough. We pray that you will bless all who seek to bring the churches together, not in uniformity, but in unity, and help us to seek those things that unite and not those which divide. <clears throat> we pray for our own leaders here at St. Thomas's, our priest Rachel, our curate Dominic, our lay reader Tina, as they continue to guide us through these uncertain and anxious times. Lord, hear us. Lord, <laughs> Lord, when we read or watch the news, it all seems so overwhelming. There seems to be so much injustice, so much suffering and so much that is wrong in the world. Help us not to be defeated by the needs of the world and the cries of its people, but to pray and to do what we can to help alleviate suffering and bring about justice. And so we continue to pray for peace in the places where there is violence and conflict. In the Middle East, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, in Africa, Somalia, Yemen, Nigeria, and the many other places that never make it into our news. We pray for racial justice in every country, for the victims of ethnic cleansing and persecution, those denied jobs or homes because of their race, colour or creed. Those who suffer abuse and name calling because of who they are. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory on the cross, you broke down the barriers between God and his people. You love each one of us, whatever our race or creed. We pray for the breaking down of barriers which hold people apart. Fear, hatred, ignorance, greed, lack of understanding. We pray especially at this time for the United States, for the healing of divisions, for wisdom in its leaders and people, and for peace throughout the nation. Bring all your human children closer together so that when we may all be one in the light of your love and that all mankind may be granted your peace the peace which passes all understanding. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Lord, you are the source of all healing, and we bring to you today all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We pray for all who have contracted coronavirus. We pray for the families of those who have died. We give thanks for all who are seeking to alleviate the suffering of those who are ill. And we pray for the work of researchers and scientists continually working to find further treatments and cures. We bring to you all who are known to us who are ill, in hospital, awaiting treatment or an operation. <clears throat> we ask for your healing on those known to us, those on our prayer list, and particularly today for Rachel's father, Colin, who is in hospital, and for her mother, Jill. Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus, hear us. Father, we commend to your eternal care all who have died, especially those whom we loved and who were our friends. We remember Michael Dent and give thanks for his life of service to you and to those in his care. We pray for all who are grieving at this time. Wrap them in your arms of love and give them the strength to face each day. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Lord God, the scripture says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that you have prepared for us. 
Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and minds to receive from you all that you would give us, so that we can all be salt and light within this often dark world. And when we hear you call us, give us the courage to follow where you lead. And so, rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas and all your saints, commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Let's accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, and so we come now to the peace. Because our Redeemer Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. And the peace of the, the Lord be always with you. So and, with you. And also with you. And we will offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you all. Peace. Peace, everybody.
we begin as we say that the we say that the Lord is here and his spirit is with us and so we we will lift up our hearts we lift them to the lord but let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise holy father heavenly king almighty and eternal god through jesus christ our lord and now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the world a new light has dawned upon the world that all the nations might be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory and because of this with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying holy holy all glory be to you, uh, uh, you eternal father who in your tender mercy gave your only son our redeemer uh, uh, jesus christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption and who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for for the sins of the whole world because he did institute and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again we ask that you will hear us merciful father we humbly pray and grant that where we cannot receive you sacramentally today, we might, whenever we receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your, 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 your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, only institution in remembrance of his death and passion, that we might be partakers of his most blessed body and blood because in the same night that he was betrayed he took bread and he gave you thanks for he broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said take and eat for this is my body which is given for you and so do this in remembrance of me but then after supper, he took the cup and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. And so do it. I'll do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. So, 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 oh, 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 just as our Redeemer taught us, we now pray. We say, our oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be you, 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 your name. We ask that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven that you will give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We ask that you will lead us not into temptation, but that you will deliver us from evil because the kingdom the power and the glory are yours both now and for ever amen We break the bread of life, and that light, oh, because that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Let that Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. So we continue as we pray and we pray, Lord, though we must be apart, we can be one in an act of spiritual communion, both with you and with one another. And therefore we pray, we pray thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given to us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts, O most merciful Redeemer, our friend and our brother. We ask that we might know you more clearly. That's we might love you more dearly and that we might walk with you more, more nearly day by day. Amen. We continue. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. 
We ask that you be with us today as we give ourselves to you. We ask that you will hear our prayers for others and for ourselves and that you will keep us in your care. Amen. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to trust you, that you will help us to know that you are with us. We ask that you will help us to believe that there is nothing which can keep us from the love which is given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray, we pray God of glory, you have fed us with your words 
because he is the bread of life. We ask that you will fill us with the power of your spirit, that through us the light of your glory might shine through all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home, and that dying and living, he declared your love. He gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. We ask that you will keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us in order that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
so, uh, 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 so we come to a prayer for the church family. We say, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect only our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God. We are giving and loving wherever we are and whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Um, just before I come to the blessing, I want to say an enormous thank you to people who continue to come to these services. It's always lovely to see you. A particular thank you to people who uh, people who've done the readings this morning, people who've done the prayers. I'm enormously grateful to you. Um, just a reminder um, that church at four will be happening this afternoon on Zoom. I've sent out invitations to the people who normally come. Um, but if you know of anyone else who might like to come, uh, then do please encourage them to do so. We will be meeting on Zoom on the normal church number, um, and that will be at four o'clock. But now we come to the blessing, and I invite people to stand if they would like to do so. And so may Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and, and may gladden our hearts with the good news of his kingdom and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you for ever. Amen. So, 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 so we pray, Lord, that you, uh, you will strengthen us in the power of your spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. In the name of Amen. Christ. Amen.